The story of my ant colonies has taken a shocking turn I never could have predicted. The events about to unfold will leave you on the edge of your seat. There is a lot to unpack in this episode, so let's go back to three weeks ago. I have two colonies of carpenter ants, the minions of Midas, ruled by Queen Midas, and the golden galleons, captained by Aunt Bonnie. Both of these colonies are doing well, and were started from single captured queens back in April. Now, their numbers are steadily increasing, and with the introduction of a heating pad, I've noticed some interesting changes in behavior. The galleons started bringing their brood pile into the outworld where it was nice and warm, always leaving at least one worker to stand guard. I was sure to leave part of their setup off of the heat so they could regulate their temperature. The queens tend to stay in the cooler areas, while many of the workers like to cozy up where it's warm. Everything was going great. Until one day, I found a daughter of Queen Midas lying on her back in the outworld. She was dying. The rest of the colony seemed fine, so I didn't raise any alarms. I knew that a queen's first workers are smaller and don't live very long, so perhaps she was the first and this was just her time to go. Little did I know, this was the start of a devastating chain of events. The next day, I discovered another worker dead in the outworld. Then, to my horror, I found that the rest of the colony was dying too. No! This was terrible! Thankfully, Queen Midas was still alive, and there was one remaining worker that was frantically trying to escape. What was going on? Queen Midas crawled to the back of the tube and started lying next to the dying workers, almost as if she was mourning the loss of her children. The last living worker was still panicked and looking for a way out. Soon, Queen Midas joined her in the outworld. This was her first time leaving the test tube in over six months, so something was definitely wrong. I had to get them out of there immediately, but I didn't have another test tube large enough to hold her. Improvising, I held up the entrance to an empty nest, offering her an opportunity to escape. She accepted the offer fairly quickly, and ventured into the mouth of the cave. It's sad. This nest was going to be her colony's new home in just a matter of weeks once they had enough workers. As she explored the new space, my heart was pounding hoping that this new home would not instead become her grave. With a damp Q-tip, I very carefully extracted the remaining eggs and larvae, then gently placed them into the nest. I did the same with the last worker. Now that the survivors had been relocated, I had to figure out what on earth was happening to the minions of Midas. I wondered if it was mold related or some kind of bacteria in their setup, because upon checking the other colonies, it looked like business as usual. But this was sudden and deadly, which suggests it was something they ate. But then again, the other colonies looked fine. Maybe I had given them a bad mealworm, since the other colonies preferred fruit flies. I started scouring the internet for answers, but was left scratching my head. I was restless all night, hoping she would be okay. The next morning, I stood there, terrified to look into the nest, afraid of what I would find. Reluctantly, I removed the cover and peered into the nest. Oh, thank God, she was still alive, and she had moved the brood pile into the nest with her, which was a good sign. The worker was acting strange, which told me she wasn't going to make it. And later that day, I found the last minion of Queen Midas in her final moments. This means that even if Queen Midas pulls through, she will have to start over from the founding stage with no workers coming to feed her. But she has done it before. Maybe she can do it again. The next day, I kept a close watch on Queen Midas. She had left the nest, which was strange. But before we go any further with her, I need to talk about the difficulties I've been facing with the gumdrops, my new colony of honeypot ants that just arrived the day before this tragic event. You see, up to now, I've pretty much only been giving the colonies drops of honey for their sugars. It's convenient, doesn't go bad, and the ants love it. But the gumdrops are a lot smaller than my other ants, and I didn't get footage of this, but two of the gumdrops on separate days ended up getting stuck in the honey. I did my best to free them, but one was injured in the process and the other didn't make it. So I tried soaking a small cotton ball in sugar water, but that ended up making the test tube way too humid and one of them drown. I also accidentally closed the lid on another one while trying to keep them contained during feeding. 
Uh, now we're down to five, and needless to say, I am off to a rocky start with the gumdrops. And then, I find this! A member of the Golden Galleon stuck in honey. What? Later, I found one of the Antarchists suffered the same fate. Seriously? Why is everyone getting stuck in honey all of a sudden? Haven't we had enough death for one weekend? <sighs> but my troubles were far from over. The next day, I had discovered another Golden Galleon worker had died, and there were body parts strewn about the outworld like a murder scene. What was going on? It was clear this was no longer a coincidence. Whatever happened to the minions of Midas is starting to happen to the other colonies. I continued searching for answers, until I came across a Reddit thread talking about how fruit can contain traces of insecticides, which, by definition, are designed to kill insects. I froze. Before the gumdrops had arrived, I had given all three colonies a piece of apple as a treat. Did I accidentally poison my ants? Another post said that flea powder for dogs can kill ants. I thought back, and I did apply some flea oil to Chester a couple weeks ago. Maybe I had pet him, then handled their food or feeders without washing my hands? The fruit or oil seemed like the most likely explanations, but I just don't know. If any experienced ant keepers out there have insight, please share so we can all learn from this together. Okay, now checking back in on Queen Midas. She wasn't behaving normally. She was in the outworld, away from her babies. I gave her access to anything she might need. Water, sugar, and protein. She wasn't interested. Instead, it looked like she was trying to get out. Where was she trying to go? Then, it occurred to me that she might be seeking the comfort of something familiar. She had just been through a traumatic event, and after losing all of her children, was in a new, strange place, all alone. So I cleaned and attached her old test tube. A while later, she was no longer in the outworld, and not in the nest. She had retreated back to the home she's known for most of her life. That made so much sense. I opened the nest and gently retrieved the eggs. There was definitely a visible response once I had returned her babies, and I feel like briefly, we had a small moment of connection between us. Please don't give up, Queen Midas. Hang in there. The next day brought more bad news. Queen Midas was okay, but Aunt Bonnie's crew was dropping like flies. She was now down to two workers, and the rest of the setup looked like a battlefield with limbs and antennas scattered about. A couple of the Antarchists were not doing well either. I feel absolutely terrible. I've been doing everything in my power to help these little ants thrive, and I may have unintentionally spelled their doom. That evening, just as I was thinking Queen Midas was going to be okay, my worst fear was realized. No. No, no, no. I couldn't bear to see her like this. I am so sorry I let you down, Queen Midas. From the moment I saw her back in April, she was immediately my favorite. And we've watched her journey from the very beginning, persevering through the founding stage, welcoming her first daughter. Had it not been for my mistakes, she would have gone on to build an impressive kingdom. Goodbye, Queen Midas. I am so sorry your reign was cut short. Each passing day, I've been holding my breath to see whether or not the Pirate Queen and her crew would be able to weather the storm. For the next several days, they didn't move much, staying closely huddled together around the brood pile, until I noticed two of the workers moving the brood over the warm heat mat which was a positive sign of normal activity. Unfortunately, one finally succumbed to the same fate as the others, leaving Aunt Bonnie with just one first mate at her command. Even if this worker survives, this puts the colony in a delicate state, especially since they will need to be put into hibernation soon. Two weeks have gone by, and I think it's safe to say the storm has passed. A couple more of the Antarchists also died, but now new life has emerged from their cocoons. The surviving colonies will need a bit of time to recover, but I am so thankful that there was a triumph at the end of this chapter. I thought all three colonies were going to get wiped out, game over. This makes Aunt Bonnie the sole survivor of the original five queens I started out with. <laughs> at that time, I had no idea that the hobby of ant keeping would be such a dramatic tale of love and loss. This is definitely a learning process, though. 
and I encourage those of you who have been doing this a while to continue sharing your expertise with those of us starting out. I really hope my next video can just be a wholesome little story about ants being ants without all this death and suffering, but we'll just have to wait and see as the story of the ants marches on.